Hey guys, it's Trize here, and what you're seeing right now is an ancient car body. To be specific, I'm going to be building this car to have the most powerful V16 engine in the year of 1946, which is the lowest year you could set in this game. So let's start things off with the panel material of this year's vehicle. So for the panel material, well, being this old, let's just do the old steel panel material with a ladder type chassis, steel chassis material, front launch usual engine, and the front suspension... Mmm, probably do coils front and back, which is not the most ideal, but how the hell not? So for the engine, like I just said, we're gonna be using a V9 degree V16 engine with the bore and stroke maxed out to 120 millimeters each, if I can get this bad boy up here, there we go. Which gets the engine size to 21,715 cubic centimeters, or 21.7 liters, with a dual vert cam 4 valve, also cast iron for the quality setting right here for the 4.2 open beta branch of automation, is we're gonna quality spam this to a plus 15 for virtually everything. So for the balance shaft, let's try a harmonic damper and... Oh boy, uh, cast everything? Yeah, cast everything. <laughs> I'm used to having like build steel, titanium, and regular forged pistons. This is gonna be a challenge, folks. Let's try back up the compression. Max this bad boy. No turbochargers whatsoever, so it's naturally as for single. Oh no, carburetors. We got single barrel carbur, single barrel eco. Oh no, but good. Fortunately, wait. We can dev map this. Okay. All right, race tube your headers, dual exhaust, no everything, and max this out. We got plenty to go. Goddamn 832 horsepower right off the bat. So unfortunately, our max RPM is 5,800 RPM for the pistons and comrades because, well, the pistons and comrades, they explode. We could try lowering the stroke if we need to, to just squeeze a little bit more power by increasing the RPM with the RPM stress for the engine in general, but we'll see. Anyway, oh, oh my god. Oh, so, oh, so it's... So this single barrel eco, we're making a lot more power. What if I... Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I forgot. Single barrel eco, you gotta lower the uh, fuel mixture quite a bit up in here. So single barrel itself, 13.3 uh, is the best we can do for the fuel mixture. Anything lower, then we're gonna be losing power as so. All right, progress report for this engine. So drop the compression just a tad and doing more adjustments. We're pretty much limited due to the car rods and the pistons for the torque stress being about maxed out up in here. Just like with Bo's torque in an engine videos that I recently done for that part of the series, which has been concluded recently. All right, I got a final up in here. So after the tuning and everything, everything done with this engine, but that's not for the hell of it. So we do get the final horsepower rating of 1,566.4 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and the torque at 1,491.8 pounds feet of torque at 5,400 RPM. And what's going to be here what this engine sounds like right now? That's the aggressive sounding engine, despite not breaching the 6,000 RPM mark. Damn. So for the rest of this vehicle, for the drive type, let's do a launch usual river drive setup with a manual 4 speed with the top speed set, let's see here, uh, 205 miles an hour. Not too shabby. I mean, for its time, that's pretty great, but Jesus. And we're not going to quality spam the vehicle because we get less weight up in here than we're going to generate a buttload of wheels, but especially for these bicycle-ass tires up in here, folks. And for the tires, yes, cross-ply, semi-slicks. We're in trouble here. So 75 millimeters, 25-inch rims, goddamn. All right, brakes. Max them out, single-shoe brakes, front and back. For the under tray, none. Brake airflow, 16, good enough. And for the interior of the vehicle, maybe premium? No, no, luxury. Luxury with no entertainment whatsoever. All right, no power steering, standard safety standards, and automatic suspension, and my front penis fell off. Just right away, the front tires are blown out according to the game here because this car is way too OP. What if I try to get it working? Let's see. All right, so I increased the tire diameter to 820 millimeters front and back with some 19-inch rims, and for the front, amber tire width has been adjusted to 185 millimeters for the front and back with some semi-slick tires as so. It did say there's some severe brake fade in. Oh my god. Erased pad types. Good. All right, so I pretty much got the vehicle pretty much all set and done, except for the designing part of this here vehicle. So we're trying to move this engine back as we can, which I think we may not or whatever, unless we just put this inside the frickin', uh, the inside of the vehicle, we could probably do that, but, uh, whatever. 
So let's get ready to design this here vehicle before jumping in to Beam and Cheat Drive. So let's go to fixtures and design a vehicle right now. So for the design of this old car, it didn't take long to design it as it took roughly a half hour to get everything done. For the styling, I tried to replicate what a 1900s car looks like. I added a large grill at the very front, a radiator cap, and some side hood vents. I also later added these front lanterns that some cars had back then, including an actual front hand crank to start up the engine, because electric car starters weren't really a thing back in the day. At first, I decided to paint most fixtures chrome, but since this isn't the 1950s, I changed the paint to a brass-looking color. I then added some wire rims to the car. What kind of sucks about the rim choices is that there's a lack of good wire rims you could choose from. So I picked these thin, single lug nut ones and painted the rims black and the tires white. Yes, a handful of cars had colored tires like this back in the day. Although these white tires that are painted white look so stupid, but it fits for its time. Lastly, for the back, I added some basic rear lanterns and a black license plate, just stuff it's special. So after getting everything done with this car, here's what it came out. This is the 1907 Welker Type D Sport. It's a decent looking town car from the beginning of the 20th century, with a 21.7 liter V16 engine making over 1500 horsepower. You better hold on to something since no one was smart enough to invent seatbelts in that time period. Alright, so I'm done building this ancient car, the Welker Type D Sport up in here with these white-ass tires pretty much giving like the 1900s up in here where all these tires were either all black, all white, matched the color of the car or whatever. Which pretty looks kind of goofy with these white-ass tires, not these thin tires where they were colored and more suited for its time period. But here, this looks stupid. But we have to make them wide because, well, it's a powerful and fast boy, alright? So let's get ready to export this bad boy, but despite having all these problems right here, such as some strong understeer, wheel spin issues, more wheel spin issues, front rear jumper speed too hard, front brake for 32 well, engine baking quite full, clearance issues, and the torque load, and the RPM stress, comrade stress, semi suck tires, front tires being tight and narrow, and rear tires being quite narrow. Let's jump it over to BMG Drive to see how this old, but powerful vehicle performs. So here we are at the bottom map of Baja Hills, which I've never used this map in my automation beam and G career, pretty much in this channel's history. So we got the car all set and done here. We got these rear brake lanterns up in here, along with the, uh, damn it game. With these turn signals too, which I implemented these because why not? And lastly, the headlights and head lantern thingies right here too. So since we got this vehicle all said and done here with no problems whatsoever, let's get ready to do our base performance test with this vehicle. We'll start off with the 0-62 to acceleration test, followed by the 62-0 to brake test, and lastly, a top speed run with this old-ass vehicle. So we can see some skid marks ahead, which I pretty much test out this vehicle before doing a 0 so let's do so right now. Let's see. Accelerate, and just like those skid marks, we're skidding, and over rev risk, okay, that's a little bizarre. Oh, uh, wait, it didn't do it. So let's just floor it all the way, no rewards. Keep flooring it. 0 to 62 in 8.56 seconds of 428.06 feet. Yeah, that's what you get for having cross ply tires. All right, let's see, 0 to 62, so before we go downhill, brake. We're braking, skittiness of the tires because no ABS, and 62 to 0 in 4.47 seconds of 211.96 feet. Both time-wise and distance-wise, that is extremely abysmal. Even though it's an old car, but still. I mean, you pretty much gotta stop as soon as possible, but this is not acceptable. So for a top speed run artifact as we get another over rev risk and a slightly worse 0-62 to time, almost 9 seconds flat of 460 feet, almost 460 even, and go 90 miles an hour and we're drifting up in here. Let's see, how will a turn work? Oh no. God damn, we hit that barrier kind of hard there, the guardrail. So we're still getting all this... That's a freaking rock, Willis, but I'll just say, we're gonna keep going straight and do all that by finding a straight road. All right, here are some acceptably straight roads. Look at this. Wheel spin while I'm forwarding it in second gear. Let's see. Cut down. Ooh, nice drift right there. A micro drift getting a little bit of wheel spin into oversteer. Look at this. 100 miles an hour. Look at this. We're drifting in a straight line. 110 miles an hour. We're still getting wheel spin. Curvy road up ahead. I don't give a damn. Let's just... I don't care anymore. 
I don't care. I should probably put this on to like Italy or Utah, West Coast USA, but I don't really care about this vehicle. It's fast to a certain extent, but it will spins a hell of a lot of times because one, engine start of oil, and two, we got these white ass cross by tires. And we land in our four wheels again. Okay, thank you. So pretty much damage everywhere we look at it. We got one tire missing, and that'll pretty much be it for this vehicle. So right now, let's jump into a time trial run and take it there right now. So here we are, lined up in the start and finish line at Hirochi Raceway, and we'll be doing two laps without a rolling start using the long circuit layout of this here racetrack. So since we're all lined up, let's get ready to start our race here in three, two, one, go. And... Oh, uh, what the hell? And look at the frickin' power band. 1500 horsepower, 1300 pounds feet of torque, around 1360. This is ridiculous. And look at this, already. Already. Off to a great start by hitting the concrete wall. So its top speed of 200 miles per hour might not- Let's, let's break at the 3 marker. Oh no. I would say the 200 mile an hour top speed, I don't think we're gonna achieve this no matter what. Whether it's this track, that Baja Hills map, a long ass, like, straightaway or whatever, a map has a long straightaway, like, Stage Route X, or the Endless Highway or whatever. It seems like getting a top speed in this vehicle is impossible with this amount of wheel spin. Okay, it's first gear wheel spin into second gear wheel spin. I mean... And we're under steering too. This is bad. If I would change the bias to tires, probably maybe like uh, like an oversteering bias by increasing the front tire diameter quite a bit. If I could, then we could probably get better cornering capabilities in this vehicle rather than just what we're getting right here at the understeering. And second of all, unlike my most powerful engine creations, where you get the most oh no, <laughs> uh, tire damage, the most torque or power, it's not overheating just yet. I mean, we're halfway on the temperature gauge, but we're stuck. Alright, please don't screw this up at this final bend to finish up our first lap. I'm getting better at this driving a car here, but we're still under steering at 43 miles an hour, so we get the straightaway. And a lap time will be a 2 minutes, 28 seconds, 617 milliseconds. We gotta slow down quite a lot up in here. I'll say quite a bit, but quite a lot. We'll get drifting. Deja vu. I'm doing some ragtime before. And also a side note with one of my recent, Jesus, my automation creation, my recent creations, which would have been my latest video, but not right here, is what it would have been an electric car, basically an electric muscle car to rival the Dodge, I think Dodge Charger Daytona or something like that. It's basically Dodge's upcoming electric car, which are basically to rival my automation creations, but unfortunately with the 0 0.25 update of BMG Drive, it's like the recent update had broken one of the files needed to convert the car from gas to electric. I tried to follow a tutorial of an automation creator, which I have recently worked with in my recent collab called Filament 86. Yet a drag and drop file of converting a gas car to an electric car by using the vehicle configuration menu, just a basic swap of the engine to an electric motor and you're done. Except for tuning the performance manually in the file by using Notepad++. So I tried to load the vehicle with the electric motor and, a bit, and the game basically just hangs and almost like crashes most of the time. So unfortunately with the electric car, that has to be put on hold unfortunately until there's a fix with either the file or something new comes along from converting a gas car to an electric car with this current version of the game. So we're gonna get a much, much worse lap time. We're gonna be in the 230s. So let's see, 235, 6, 7, 8, 2 minutes, 38 seconds, 340 milliseconds. Basically, it's freaking pie up in here of a total time of 5 minutes, 6 seconds, 930 milliseconds, which puts us in dead last, just one place shy of it in the top three. All right, let's conclude this by crashing this barrier, everything as is. What a weak collision. Yeah, hella weak up in here. Well, we're stuck, so after after destruction, it's screwed up, you know, how it should be. So for the final part of the video, let's go on over and drop ourselves down to a brutal slope to see if this ancient 1900s, basically supercar, or maybe like a hypercar, could survive these treacherous slopes. So take it to the top of the ramp right now. So here we are, facing down the ramp here, and basically this hill, everything else in general, so let's accelerate and see if we can get a better 0-62, to 62. let's see, we're flying through the gears. That's more like it, 0-62 to 62 in 4.10 seconds of 164.01 feet, we're going side to side, and, oh boy, this is, this is, this is, this is gonna be bad, folks, we're, 
now we're going a straight line. Here we go. 220 miles an hour. Hover at 222, 223. We're going to base drop at the bottom of the ramp at 222. And there goes some of our lamps, our thingies. 180 miles an hour at the end of the ramp. So here we go. Face down. And come right back up. And on our side. And all that good stuff. All right, let's get ready for a camera going. So 60 times slow-mo, hide the UI, and go. Let's see. Ooh, damn, this is going to be a collision. All right, 100 times slow-mo. Here we go. 100 times slow-mo as is. So here is the car. Here's my pimped out camera work. And that is basically a steel chassis and steel pad material. This is what it does to a vehicle like this. It's just a flat plane of mess. We got whoops, all of our four tires. We've all our four tires off of our vehicle. So we got these three. Yeah, all four tires. God dang, man. Let's see. Full time. And the engine somehow still runs despite engine that was starved of oil and all of our four tires gone. Let's see. Let's grab a tire and assault the car. Ooh, we got that. So, <laughs> yeah, boy, we got the drivetrain exposed. And if you were in this vehicle, you'd be perished big time. All right, final part of the video as we accelerate. Who cares about the 0-60 to 60 because we already did that, so come on down on the top of the slope. Let's get ready to crash ourselves down, straight down ahead to the square block, a.k.a. the wedge thing, which basically you get a wedge-shaped look at your vehicle, crash at this block at a very high speed. So despite doing some left and right to the grass here, we're pretty much stable now, pretty good up here, and now we're stable. So driving at high speed is stable, mid-speed's like 180 miles an hour, 160. That's questionable. So we are going to crash this thing pretty much at uh, top speed like we did at the ramp. So 222 miles an hour. Let's get this camera going. So slow down to 100 times. And here we go. 100 times. Here goes the front. Here goes the rest of the cab. The rest of the vehicle. There goes the drivetrain poking way out with some moose polygons. And that thing is pretty much a freaking treasure chest thingamajig up in here or something like that. So let's do full time. And the exhaust be popping, all the debris coming down, and the vehicle and the engine. Well, the engine is basically dead from that collision, and the vehicle is hella tow. So let's see. Drag this down to bottom, and we'll do the aftermath destruction. All right, here is the vehicle coming to a rest up in here. So the only surviving tire is this back white ass tire up in here. It would be better if these were a bit thinner, but this looks, like I said, looks kind of goofy having these white tires being all white like these old cars had back in the day. And second of all, the car is a mind of its own as it's moving on its own because of the terminal amount of damage applied to this vehicle. So we pretty much made an interesting wedge-shaped look, a triangular look at this vehicle. We got loose polygons, sharp polygons all over the place, pretty much making this thing unrecognizable. So that'll do it with automation and BMG Drive with the Welker Type D Sport. In terms of performance with this old and early 1900s pre-Model T, pre-assembly line era of cars, well, <laughs> you see right away once I Ford it, you got wheel spin everywhere. So it's a powerful vehicle that wheel spins and understeers like crazy. If you were to drive this vehicle, just drive it at slow speeds. Don't even think about foring this in the future. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos like this in the future. And also, check out my social media down in the description below. So this is Tries rising up and signing out.